Now there is no doubt in my mind that virtual reality as it is right now is amazing. But there's always been one piece of hardware that seems very underutilized outside of a couple of games such as VRChat or Neos. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about trackers. These neat little devices allow for us to track our entire body by placing just three extra trackers on our waist and our feet, allowing for us to actually feel as though we're fully in a virtual world. So in this video, I'm gonna show you both how to detect if a player is using a virtual tracker and then how simple it is to actually see these virtual trackers move in your virtual space. But before we jump into that, if you haven't checked it out already, over on my second channel, I checked out these grip covers by Kiwi Design. These go right on a Quest 2, and they were kind enough to send out these specific covers for me to review on that channel. So if you didn't check it out, I'll have a link both to this video and the second channel, Rift in Reality, in the description so you can check it out for yourself. And I highly recommend that you do. But, and with that, let's jump right into the video. All right, so I have my trackers on me. Um, none of them are turned on, so you can see, hopefully you can see, I have one on my waist, I have one on my right foot, and I have one on my left foot. None of them are turned on. I've given them all sphere meshes, so you would be able to see them if they were. They're, they're, they are small sphere meshes, though. Um, about right here somewhere is where my tracking space is. You can see that they're not even visible yet. So let me go and turn on one. Uh see blue there it goes it's on and there we go so you can now see that the uh, that the tracking sphere is there to show that it, it is there and I can also do it for each of my feet so let me go and turn both of these on uh, try to see through the headset so they're both blue uh, they should both enable here in a second there's my left foot and there's my right foot so you can see they were completely invisible until I actually turned them on um, and this is because we dis we disabled the device model until they were fully turned on. So, and then once they're actually turned on, their device model is enabled and they snap right to wherever the tracker itself is. And you can see exactly where the trackers themselves actually are. Um, now, I do want to note something that I did find out is that you do need to have SteamVR running for this whole tutorial to work. If you don't have SteamVR running, you actually won't find the tracker motion sources like I'll be doing in the tutorial. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this. If you don't have SteamVR running, you may run into some issues. Make sure you have SteamVR running before you open up your project. Um, but you can see otherwise, everything is functioning just fine. You can see the trackers are all working just fine. They move right along with me. So there you go. Now that we've seen how this tr these trackers are going to function, let's go ahead and open up our VR pond so that way we can get set up. We will need to make sure that our player has a few additional motion controller components that we don't typically have on our VR pond, one for each of the Vive trackers that we're going to be using. In this case, I'm going to add three, one for each of the Vive trackers that I will be using for this example. I'm going to name them each waist, left foot, and right foot. Once you have these in place, we need to give them each a motion source and a model. We will start with the model since this is going to be pretty simple and it's going to be consistent across all of our trackers. I'm going to select all three of these. I'm going to set the display device model to true, switch the display model source to custom, and finally give the component whatever mesh you would like to use. In this case, I'm going to use just some simple spheres since we don't actually have any tracker meshes that would be simple to use in this example. Next, we need to set the motion sources for each. Going through each of the motion controllers one by one, I'm going to set waist to tracker waist, left foot to tracker left foot, and right foot to tracker right foot. In case you're curious how I got these values, let me go ahead and show you by opening up SteamVR. If I open up SteamVR, I can hit the menu, devices, and manage trackers. Then in the new window that opens up, click the button that says manage trackers. The ones that we are interested in are the ones that start with LHR, since these are our Vive trackers. As you can see, 
Each of these trackers, I've given them a specific role, waist, left foot, and right foot respectively. This is how we can determine the motion sources that we need to set on the motion controller components in Unreal Engine. Now, if you're satisfied and you know that a player is going to be using Vive trackers when they're playing your game or application, you can honestly just stop here. But I'm going to take this a step further so that way you can actually check to see if our motion control components are actually working and we actually have a Vive tracker hooked up to them. To do this, I'm going to jump into the event graph, add an event tick, followed by a sequence with three output nodes. Then I'm going to grab each of our motion control components that we just put together, get the motion source from each, and then using these names that we have gotten from our motion control components, I'm going to check is motion source tracking and set one for each of the execution nodes in our sequence. Using this will return false if our Vive Tracker is not active and not actually tracking and it will return true if our Vive Tracker is actually working and is connected up to our motion controller component correctly. This is how we can detect if our motion controller components are actually attached to some kind of tracker. Finally, we will set display device model equal to our return value. This will let us disable the model for each motion source when it is not active. And that's it, it's really all that simple. With that, we're able to check both if a player is actually using trackers in their play space, and if they are, we're able to see where those trackers are in that virtual world. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like the subscribe button down below. I also want to give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters you should see over here on the right hand side. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.